how's everybody doing? Well, uh, I'm so excited to be here to talk to Mark. Uh, we met many years ago. I think when we met was uh, when you shot the poster for Superbad. Yeah. Is that the I case? I know you were. I don't even think I was there. No, ah, you didn't even show up. I didn't show up. Which is I, unusual. I didn't know that I was supposed to. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, the poster was so good, it was weird. Because it was just two guys. It was just Jonah Hill and Michael Sarah standing there. Yeah. And that doesn't seem like it, it would be I, That's why I didn't, I didn't get it at first. I was like, this is funny. This is guy's going to be like yeah. the funny guy for the rest yeah. of our you know, lives. Did you, you see the right movie on. before you saw it? Nope. Did had no idea. That's the kind it. of preparation he does, by yep. the way. That's right there. <laughs> so you didn't see the movie. You just had two nerds walk in. No, they didn't show in. me the movie. You didn't even show up for the shoot. I mean, come yeah. On. But I, don't know uh, what I was thinking true, back then. True, true story. I think this is uh, the way it's worked with our relationship. Is that when that movie did so well, I think you gave a lot of credit to the poster, and then I it did. was like it's kind of like the. The David Lynch story where he has the the, the burger and the mm -hmm. mall and the fries yeah. every day for because it's yeah. just like he knows that everything's working well. Mm -hmm. It's the same with you. It's like yeah. this guy shot the poster, things went well. Let's just keep don't let's, don't fuck it up. I'm I'm scared to not use you. Yeah, I, you're. I'm but we've always had um, a great like one on one about like the way that you approach a one sheet, right? We're gonna get into that a little bit, yeah. and that is uh, a it's very different from the way that most uh, studios put together concepts. Yeah. Like they come up with 400 and you're like, it's really just one. It's just like a guy <laughs> sitting here and then another guy sitting here and like they got their hands in their pockets and they're just, they look sort of disheveled. Yeah. And there's, they, they, well, what about the other 500, uh, you know, renderings? And you're like, I don't do that. It's my movie. Yeah. And, and that's what I like about Mark's work is even like on Pineapple Express, he, he did the poster for that, and then the poster for uh, Step Brothers and, and Holiday Nights. And there's a, I don't know what he's doing that makes the, the, them good because so much of these posters are very simple, but he's catching a, a vibe and the essence of the people in a way that uh, it really penetrates. And that's why I always thought, well, you don't really need much if. You can capture the spirit if you look at the poster for Superbad, and part of you just goes, I, I gotta know what those guys are up to. I, I, gotta, <laughs> I, I have a sense that there's something amazing about these two guys. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that you notice that type of intimacy in all of the photographs in the book, that in uh, whatever magic you're doing yeah, with people. But, but very much in the way that you experience comedy, you do it from a place of the things that you know, right? Like when you write, you write because it's a, it's a pretty honest storyline for you, right? You're not, mm -hmm. you're not building a lot yeah. of fantasy. There's no dragons or anything no. like that. No, uh, I don't write props. well for dragons, Mark. I know that. <laughs> I am not good with superheroes. <laughs> and it is costing me a shitload of money. <laughs> so so we, we want to try to entertain a little bit with showing you some of the photographs. We're not going to really be able to go into length about the stories of the photographs because it's really you're still going to be here, right, after mm -hmm. I start showing these. So yes. I want to talk to you. I will, I will, I will tell you which ones are, are, are better are good. than others. Yeah, yeah that works. I will, I will tell you what I would have done. So this is like a crit <laughs> critique. Yeah. Ouch. Okay. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's just, uh, yeah, we can kind of turn around here. So I'm a Gemini. I have lots of different sides. So this is, this is the funny me. There's a lot of discussion of how much Photoshop I needed. So this was uh, guest editor in chief of Vanity Fair magazine, Judd Apatow. I was allowed to be the editor of one comedy issue, and uh, we wanted to take a picture uh, with Steve Martin because when I was a kid, I walked up to his, his house and asked for his autograph, and he said no. <laughs> And so uh, I, I told Steve Martin that we wanted to do a photograph with him, and he said, it should be me uh, bugging you. Because when I, I wrote him a letter and I was, uh, when I was a kid, and I said, How, I can't believe you wouldn't give me your autograph. You're, you're, you're the funniest guy in the world, but you treat your fans like crap. <laughs> and if you don't send me an autograph and an apology, I'm going to send your address to Homes of the Stars, and you'll have tour buses passing by 24 hours a day. 
And so he said, we should do a photo where I have the tour bus and I'm bugging you. <laughs> so this is a, uh, kind of a cross between a, a, uh, a lineup and to tell the truth. Uh, who is the real Judd Apatow? Something about, something about this is insulting to me. <laughs> I'm not sure what, but there's something that's so insulting. This is the rugged, hot cop, Judd Apatow. <laughs> True detective. This is the, the first <laughs> funny picture I ever wow. took. Wow, Stephen Wright. This is in 1986, and I didn't really know what to do, but I showed up to, to shoot Stephen Wright with a metal detector, and somehow, <laughs> We met these two women in a park, and we went right for it. <laughs> this is awesome. I'll give you the quick, quick one of this, and we're going to hustle through these. Uh, Fleetwood Mac, 25th anniversary, for Rolling Stone, 25th anniversary. Uh, I had to call Mick to tell him my idea. I said, hey, I got an idea. I was thinking about a wedding picture. You're 25 years in the group and 25 years for Rolling Stone. Would you do this wedding picture? He goes like, I only have one favor to ask you, Valk. And I said, what's that? He goes, can I be the bride? <laughs> <laughs> so this kind of show you that even musicians, this was like my fantasy. I came up with this, this is my fantasy when I was a Boy Scout. <laughs> I would have the hottest Scout Master with, you know, really just trying to work on my knots. I made my assistant practice that till we could perfect mustard hitting a hot dog before I could actually ask Jenny to do that. You have a, you have a, a very uh, amazing documentary out now. The, and we, it, this photo was so good that even while I was making the documentary, I thought, well, I know what the poster is. And yeah. what's funny about this is in the days before advanced CGI techniques, Mark just lit a desk on fire. <laughs> We actually were in downtown LA and we did not have a pyrotech. I literally rented the space and we poured a bunch of lighter fluid and... Uh... <laughs> He's reading yeah, it's Portnoy's a little complaint. dark on the dupe, but the dog's humping his leg. <laughs> if Kid Rock were us to, to make good old totems, this is what they would look like. <laughs> that is 30 gallons of olive oil that they're laying in. I swear to you. They really got to know each other that day. Yeah. <laughs> what is Trey touching? <laughs> Tom Waits uh, and I did this sh shoot together, and I didn't really know him. I invited uh, him to be in another book, and he said, yeah, come, come take the picture. He says, I got an idea, and I showed up at his door. It was 11 o'clock in the morning, and he says... Uh, I want you to go dig a grave over at the cemetery, and I'll be over there around 5.30. That's the, that's the, uh, That's the Comedy um, Magic Club at yeah. Hermosa Beach. <laughs> That's Jimmy Kimmel. How do you get the squirrel to do that? A nut. <laughs> I had that one in my office. True story. He wanted to do it and not tell, obviously, tell the football team that he was going to do it. So the coaches were like, yeah, come on Friday. It'll be great. They're going to have a practice. Come. We did it, and then of course, I got a letter from the school district I could not photograph on a schoolyard for three years. <laughs> I like how she's stepping on his foot, on his hand. So this is, you go to a party, it's a clown party, you're getting kind of loose. You're having a couple drinks with the clowns. <laughs> Gets kind of heavy. 
He's a very, he's a very loving clown. He's getting ready to leave. You're sad, but don't worry. <laughs> this is a, a Shakespearean actor who really wanted to do comedy. So, what do you want to ask me? Uh, well, you, I just look at that and go, like, oh, my God, you've been busy. Yeah, I'm fucking tired. That's a, that's I, a, I am, I'm really tired. I, that's a lot of work, but it's hard to come up with comedic pictures when we were doing the Vanity Fair comedy issue, which I right. edited. Uh, I got a chance to have a lot of talks with Mark about, well, you know, what, you know, what should these concepts be? And he would send me pictures and say, oh, we could goof on this style or that style. So we shot a, uh, like a, bl a black and white crime scene photograph of uh, Amy Schumer and John Mulaney and uh, Hannibal Burris, and John Mulaney was the corpse, yeah, uh, like a crime scene photograph. And then for this one, uh, well, we went to Carl Reiner's house and Mel Brooks. I mean, and this was came this over. was one. I mean, I was really pinching myself just because yeah. you are really in the midst of the the root of comedy with these two guys. Yeah, and I asked Mel. Brooks all about, because I was obsessed with Young Frankenstein as a kid, and he just couldn't stop talking about it. I mean, he yeah. just loves to yeah, share. They'll, they'll tell you the stories. They'll tell you the stories. I went and visited Mel Brooks recently, uh, and at the end of it, he goes, come again, but not soon. <laughs> <laughs> and then as I walked to my car, he just watched me walk to my car, and when I was really far away, he just goes, Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> did he did he pull the comb out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, there's, there's a lot there's of uh, that's a lot there's of a lot of Hitler jokes. Yeah. Still. Anyway, uh, and so oh, and then a, oh, the, for the tell me picture. tell me what this was about. Well, they always have uh, you know the the Vanity Fair photo, which is the uh, new young actresses in Hollywood, mm -hmm. and so we were trying to do a, a different take on the vat, and there was this chimpanzee there that's in the middle that poses very well, and I held the chimpanzee, but the whole time I held it, I thought, this thing could kill me at will. It was a little you're scary. Gonna be on the, you're going to be on the post. It was, it was all muscle. <laughs> uh, but, we, but we really got to take a, a, pictures with the, just everybody that I've always wanted to take a picture of. Yeah, and, it was like, it was it was like your dream come true. You could yeah. just like call them like, I'm a Vanity Fair cover, yeah. and uh, if you want to be on the cover, you can yeah. uh, show up at 8.30, and uh, we'll have coffee. Yeah. I got to boss Power. you around for a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was... What is the next category? Yes. We have a couple... Of, I don't want to run out of time. It's just some good stuff coming. Next category is BFFs. When did we start dating? Oh... Uh. <laughs> That just shows you that I'm uncomfortable being. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna turn the lights off really quickly and roll through these and just kind of. So, this is, is just a look at the genius of Judd. So one sheet basically is the movie poster. Yeah, I, I, you don't know why. <laughs> True story. I don't think I ever. I'm, I'm gonna come back to this one because I, I I don't think I told you this. Even this, it's like, it's just people dressed in dresses, and, and I just think he captures the, the vibe so well. That's the first season of Girls uh, poster, the first thing they ever did that's the, uh, for love. <laughs> this was my idea, because there was, a, there was a Rolling Stones video for the song Love is Strong, where they walked around New York and they were giants. And uh, we were trying to make a poster that was like the Spider-Man campaign. We'll come back. We'll come back to that. P Paul wasn't happy about being on the toilet. So which one? Which one would you like to? Well, this one was. To? There was also a picture uh, that he, he took was, uh, okay, so, where, so, where uh, Paul so, is. Uh, uh, you can, you, we can turn the lights back on now. Sorry. There was so a what? Tell what? What? what did, this? You did this movie, right? I uh, yes, I did this movie, and, uh, and there's a scene where Paul's on the iPad in the toilet. But well, I would always be on the iPad in the toilet. And my wife would yell, like, are you on Twitter? And I'd be like, no. And she's like, I see them coming up. 
But we did a bunch of poses, but one pose that we did, because there's a scene in the movie where Paul has a mirror and he's like trying to see like there's something going wrong in his butt. And so Mark took a picture of him like trying to look, but in the mirror you see Leslie going. <laughs> and I showed that to Paul and he's like, no. <laughs> So my story on this one is uh, the shoot was on a Sunday, and it was Saturday. I was here. It was Saturday at around uh, 5 o'clock, and I talked to the wardrobe person and got the lowdown what they had. No sweater vests. I ran yeah. to Brooks Brothers. Yeah. It was about to close. I went to Brooks Brothers. I got two of them, and I showed up, and... And magic happened. And there was, a, there was also a, a video version of this that they had moving... Uh, posters yeah. in some of the theaters where, the, so it was this pose, but then they would kind of move and look at you and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is our next category? Please go ahead and write on my photograph. This is kind of. So these are the different covers. This is what happens to me all the time. Hey, that's a really great shot. Let me just screw it up. <laughs> But they asked to put a teeny Judd head in one of these circles on the cover, and I'm like, that is so creepy. That's I just you can't creepy do that. Bad. Oh, that last one wasn't enough? Here's one more. His adorable wife on the left. That gave her a exercise motivation for a few months. <laughs> Wow. So that's an old one. Yeah, this is from Rolling Stone. So Dave, the the kind of the the, the funny part is Rolling Stone never gets photo approval. Most magazines don't. But Dave somehow got them to allow him to take some out of the edit. Yeah. So I had to take the edit to Dave and show him. And they were in slides. So he's looking through them. And I, this is the one I wanted. It was like kind of in the middle. I see him taking it. Oh, no, okay, I'm good, clear. And he went for it. And I went, Dave, you can't take that out. And I got on my knees. And I said, Dave, please, please don't, don't. It was in his office. And he goes, but I look like a trout. <laughs> and you know what? He fucking does. He does. He looks like a trout. <laughs> wow. How was Kennison? So this is my first. Can, um, can we turn the lights off on this one? I'm sorry about all the back and forth. So Kennison was my first Rolling Stone comedian cover. And it was, he was just incredible. What would you, I mean, you must have had amazing experiences with him. I just, I, I mean, I would watch him in the clubs, but I didn't know him well, but. Uh, when I told, Dave, this is a real fish, I told Dana Carvey if he would do this. I took it back, I took it back. Uh, I said, do you mind doing this? I showed him I could do it, and he goes like, I like sushi. <laughs> First tush on the cover of Rolling Stone. Is that you? He, he. <laughs> and this was two months before Kurt died, and we shot this picture, and then it ended up being the memorial is issue. So that's uh, so we can turn the lights back on. That's gonna be a lot of running around for you up there. I'm so sorry. Anyway, uh, which one would you like to talk about on that? Anything come to fancy? Well, uh, how did Kurt Cobain like posing? Well. You know, the interesting thing about, I only had two shoots with them. The first time I worked with them, I was in Melbourne, and I had asked the band not to wear T-shirts with writing on it, because typically, the other guys didn't do this, but typically Kurt would wear a T-shirt that had, like, one of the sub-pop bands on yeah. it, like Flipper or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever number of bands they had there. And... He would draw, if it was Flipper, he would draw a dolphin with his eyes crossed out. And that was his stage shirt. And I just couldn't see it, like, on the cover of Rolling Stone. So I said, do you mind telling Kurt? He said, oh, no, no problem. We show up, they show up, and we're in this little remote area in, in Melbourne. They show up, the guys roll out, Kurt's the last one to get out, and the other two guys, Dave and Chris, are laughing. And I'm going, why are they laughing? And Kurt comes out, and he's, you know, he's wearing his his sweater, his traditional sweater, and he's, you know, kind of big glasses on. And 
I look at the t-shirt and it says, corporate magazines still suck. <laughs> <laughs> What's the lesson you learn? Yeah. <laughs> you don't tell somebody not to do something. Yeah. <laughs> especially if they're a reluctant rock band. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. So this is this, this series of kind of, I had a, 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 a long history of doing very uh, complicated shoes. So this is just kind of a simpler aspect to my photography. So which one do you want to look at? Well, the, the Obama shot, you have a, a, a funny story about. Well, you have a, do you met him, right? I, I have uh, paid large sums of money. <laughs> Anybody can meet the president. You just got to write a what check. What was? What, I mean, what was? Especially these days. What was your? What, I know. <laughs> I feel bad for the president because the president is kind of like Mickey Mouse at Disneyland, you, you know, because you, they have to take pictures. Like people pay money, and that's like the big thing. Like you pay money, and then they'll take a picture with you. So they are uh, a, a sizable part of their job for yeah. several years is uh, like being uh, Disneyland. Yeah. It's like being Mickey. Yeah. Isn't that weird? That, that the president has to do that to stay the president. He has to. And do you just picture. write him a check right there? Is it something? Like I bring they cash. I bring cash. <laughs> they prefer it that way. Well, I, I do remember in your stand-up piece you talked about how you were you were you were going there to to say something funny to the president to make him laugh. And yes, I wanted to make him laugh. So because they were taking pictures of. You take like one picture, and I thought I need to make him laugh for the picture, and uh, and then he told the joke and made me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> so he's got like this, like the comic straight face, and you're yes. back, got your head back, real. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, we did get a good one, but you had to ask him to do this to shoot. Well, him so from we behind. had six minutes. You have six minutes, basically six to ten minutes with, you yeah. know, the president of the United States. Because like the president now starts his day at eleven. Yeah. So he would give you more time. <laughs> Obama was actually reading them. the security briefing. That yeah. takes some time. Yeah. <laughs> right, there is no security yeah. briefing. Everything's yeah, yeah, a go yeah. for photographers. Uh, yeah, you know, it was interesting because we had this slotted out. I had, this is the second time I had photographed President Obama, and I had this idea of doing a diptych, of doing a front and a back, black and white. I saw it on white. I saw it about a silhouette. Super excited about it, but I couldn't tell Jan Winter or anybody at the White House because they would think I was crazy if I said, I want to shoot yeah. the back of the president. Yeah. So I had my white set up. We're in Rose Garden, and we're taking pictures. Beautiful, incredible spring day. And we get that picture done. And I said, um, walked up to him like he's just my friend. I'm like, hey, you want to do one, one kind of cool artistic picture of you, a front and a back, like a, you know, diptych. And he goes, okay. So we shot the front, and you know, everybody was just talking. They didn't care about that. And then I said, okay, let's shoot the back now, kind of quietly. And he turns around, and I start, you know, like, okay, elbows out a little bit because I really wanted to frame it perfectly. As you see, it was like there's this yeah. real symmetry to it. And I look over my shoulder at the crowd because I wanted to just make sure I wasn't, you know, going to get shot. And I look over and, like, the jaws are dropping up of the <laughs> White House people. And <laughs> the magazines are going, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. And then finally he stops, like, listening to me. And I can see him getting a little like, agitated. And he says, hey, is this going to make my ears look big? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no. And he goes, okay, that's enough art. And that was it. <laughs> But you know, it's yeah. like, I have to really build my, my momentum and my courage up when I do the shoots like that. Like you just walk in there yeah. and you just turn everything yeah. off and you just go for it. Cause that's six minutes and it's gone so fast and I don't, to, I don't, I don't know anything like that. And you have to be confident enough to direct you know, Springsteen or, yeah. or uh, the Yeah, because they all want you, well, they want you to tell them what to do. Yeah. It's like when Trump, uh, yesterday, when he was taking pictures with Kim Jong-un, and as they were, like, walking over to take pictures, he's like, yeah, make sure you make us look beautiful and skinny. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that someone had to translate that for Kim Jong-un. It's like, a, like, an, like an app for big yeah. politicians. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> what is he trying to say? <laughs> so this is, that was sort of the simpler studio stuff, and this is kind of an outdoor hodgepodge. That's Curtis Mayfield. Now, Curtis was paralyzed from the neck down uh, from a lighting scaffold falling on him during a show, a, wind, a windstorm. That's Robert Frank. That really did happen. Really? That really did happen. I'll never believe you. I'll never believe you. So... Quick brief on that. That's Puffy and that's Shine. When when Shine yeah. went to jail for ten years, he came out a Hasidic Jew. That rarely happens. That <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, Bill Eggleston. All right. How does Bob Dylan like modeling? Yeah. He does, a, he does a lot of modeling does these days. Does he like days. doing it? I mean, he... No, you know, the funny thing about Dylan was that I was told by his manager, okay, Bob's going to come over, be super normal, do not shake his hand. Yeah. Like, that's... that's Be super normal, don't He's shake like his Howie hand. He's like Howie Mandel that way. Yeah. So, elevator goes down to pick him up. This is my loft on 96th Street. Sorry, not 96th Street, on Grand Street. And uh, I imagine he's in, the elevator's coming up, door opens up, it's Bob Dylan with one guy. What's the first thing he does? Grabs your hands. <laughs> that was a trick. And very, like, persnickety about the way he dressed and the way that he held himself yeah. and the, whole, you know, he's very visual. Yeah. And he was... Uh, Looked at all my books, looked at all the artwork in my place, checked everything out, and then just was just very easygoing, not, not problematic. Well, you get a look at people in a scenario that most people don't. Yeah. Like you, you're having a collaborative relationship with Lou Reed or Bob Dylan or yeah. the president, and so you have this brief amount of time where you have to be creative with Johnny Cash. Well, you know, and one of the things, and, and you know, process is always an interesting intersection for, you know, for, for people to talk about. Now, my process, obviously, since it's just one frame, is, is going to be a lot smaller. So when I get an assignment, what I'll do is I'll make a list of everything similar and everything opposite that comes to mind when I'm thinking about this person. And it may come from watching movies, listening to music, whatever's in my head that day. And so then I just start crossing things out, and I usually will come up with two that don't sound so bad. Yeah. And those will be the ideas that we walk away with. And there's a small committee that you throw it around with, but mm -hmm. you try to keep it sort of quiet. Yeah. And you don't try to tell the person that you're going to photograph too much about the photograph of the session, because then they won't come. <laughs> <laughs> well, that happens. A lot of people like, ha have bad ideas, like not Mark. Uh, <laughs> So like when we did Knocked Up and <laughs> Seth Rogen would have to go do these photo shoots for magazines to promote the movie, like every time he would show up and they would ask him to wear a diaper and get in a crib. Yeah. There's nothing fun about that. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun once. I have to show you my Steve Carell, Carell shot when he's in a onesie. In a I, when I did 40 Old Virgin, someone made me shave a V in my chest hair. And I, I didn't know to say no. I didn't know you were that allowed was, to say no. That was pre-seven publicists I and didn't managers. Know. And now I would, I'd, I'd flog them. One last, one last, quickly before we go here, I was just going to give you a little, quick little tale about this. So this shot was uh, in L.A. during the making of The Chronic. And I was, I, you know, I was in Compton. I, you know, I didn't know where the hell I was. And, uh, you know, trying to find my way. And I had to photograph these two guys who I didn't know very much about. And, uh, and I was worried. You know, it was 2 o'clock in the morning. And I, was, I didn't get my shoot yet. So I was, I was worried about if I was going to get it. You're like, guys, it's getting really late. Yeah, it was getting late. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's, he's a doctor. He must be getting up early tomorrow. I don't understand. <laughs> So 
so, so I, you know, I was talking to, to, you know, one of his, one of his guys, and I said, you know, is, is, is Dre gonna, gonna be split anytime soon? Because I knew Stoop was gonna be there forever. And he goes, oh no, you got no problem. He'll be here there all night. And I go, why? He goes, he's on house arrest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, watch out. So I don't know if you know this about me, Judd, but I do a little bit of fashion work. You do? You never liked me like this. <laughs> so I'll just throw that one up, and you can, you don't talk about it, but we can just talk about, like, kind of getting out of your, one of, the, one of the things about process that I, and certainly in my career that I've always enjoyed, and I don't know whether you feel the same way, is once I get finished with something, it's sort of done, and I try to move into the next... Am I blocking all of you? <laughs> I'm such what a you Jew. You're, you're I'm like a nervous Jewish guy, like, I'm blocking them. <laughs> is, um, is, you know, I can kind of weave in and out of ideas and different types and styles of photography that interest me, and it's sort of a, an infinite well of, you know, it's a paintbrush, so you can pick a multitude of cameras or try all kinds of different, you know, processes. Um, what about in your world? How does that work where you want to, do you ever feel the need to, to step out? Well, that's why I did documentaries the last couple of years, and I, I really enjoyed uh, making the documentary about Gary Shandling, and it was nice to, you know, it was nice to not have to think in terms of, uh, laugh and, and you know laughter you know like this isn't about that this is yeah. about trying to be honest about right. his life and his uh, you know the journey he went through and the struggles that he had and the triumphs that he had and it was a different lens right uh, what was your what, 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 how did your relationship with him start I wrote jokes for him for the Grammy Awards in 1991 uh, and uh, he asked me to write jokes and so I wrote him a ton of jokes because I, did, I wanted to be indispensable to him. Yeah. And then we became friends, and he asked me to write for the Larry Sanders show, and then one day said, do you want to direct the next one? So he was really you know, pushing me forward. He, he, he uh, saw something in me. He was like a father. Uh, he, he definitely was uh, you know, uh, like a parental figure. And I also thought that the reason why he was nice to me, on, one of the reasons was I think he wanted to prove that a parent can be kind and not crazy. That, that there was something about the relationship that he never did anything that was like to try to guilt trip me or, you know, he, he didn't like screw with my head in any way. He was very kind yeah. all the time. And it, it did feel like he felt like he wasn't treated that way. Yeah. That his mom really engulfed him and it was a, a very uh, neurotic relationship and that, that, they, that you didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. And that he tried to do that with me, to mm. just be like purely mentored, giving. And he mentored you. He, yes. he really, that's interesting. All right. Um, so I don't really have a ton to tell you about fashion, but it's yeah. uh, typically the way it works is the model is less important than the clothing. Really? Yeah. Except for when you're Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> this is personal books and personal work. This book was um, done pretty quickly, and as we were moving through doing this book, actually a lot of our survivors were just telling their, their stories for the very first time. Wow. These are uh, Mindala twins, M Mingala twins. This book called In My Stairwell. This is a destination in my building that we uncovered through uh, taking apart an old horse carriage elevator and finding this beautiful daylit spot, and that's the top of the, where the cab used to be, You're with the boss. Bill Irwin. 
Peter Beard. This is, was a, I had another idea for Jerry when he came to do this. He was very sweet to do this. And he says, no, let me, let me tell you this idea I've got. So this is what happens <laughs> when you're fooling around in the stairwell. <laughs> There's a book called Listen, which was classic still life, landscape, and nudes or my version of, I should say, sort of formalist approach. And then all the printmaking was done with platinum palladium printing, which we did at the studio. And this is Cuba. And this... Actually, this image led to my last uh, monogram, which was a uh, book on transgender on Christopher Street, which was getting back to the roots of documentary. <coughs> this is a couple that both are transgender, but they're a couple now. Or last time I checked. So everything's the opposite. <laughs> so, so the so the personal work, and I'll just I'll just flip back one second here. Let's see, can I flip back there? Did I screw it up? Oh, thank you. There we go. Any personal work you're interested in? Well, I think uh, the uh, the Christopher Street. Uh, photographs are, are very moving. And so you would go uh, out like, uh, when the light was nice near the end of the afternoon and well, you would uh, just approach yeah. people and yeah, it, was, it, it was a very, it was like a, um, it was sort of an observation that my neighborhood in the West Village, I live on the far West Village uh, at Charles Street in the West Side Highway and uh, I moved there in 97 and, and really the only thing for entertainment was crack and a tranny. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was vanishing, so I had nothing to do, no. Um, but I really, I did, I did feel the neighborhood was starting to disappear. Yeah. And so I thought, you know, I really haven't tackled the idea of going out in the street and just asking people if I could just take pictures of them. And I was mostly interested in a lot of the street walkers that were starting to disappear, so I started to take pictures and kind of get in the groove of asking people if it was okay, and I'd pick a square format, and I really kind of thought I knew what I was doing, and then around the 10th picture, I realized that I wasn't doing a book on streetwalkers. I was starting to really hit upon transgender, and the thing that changed that direction for me was because I got to know a lot of these you know, ladies, and they told me that the reason why they were working on the street is because they wanted to go and change their genders, that they were what they wanted out of this body. And so that for them, that was an opportunity yeah. to do it and get it done with and, you know, and you, made, and you did it. some video documentary. Yeah, and I, and well. I, and so once we started to, you know, uncover what the story was, and I worked with an assistant and then I had a friend of mine that would go and you know, try to wrangle some of the other, you know, people that we were trying to find, because it was, it was really random when we would find them. So, and, and, and we would walk up and down the streets, you know, same street, actually, for two or three hours, and someday it was like, you know, someday you'd get one, someday you'd get none, someday you'd have ten portraits. It was pretty mm -hmm. wonderful yeah. to just do that. And then a uh, big moment for us was that we went to a trans panel, which is a little church. It was like, 10 people on the panel and like 12 people in the audience. And that's when we met our guys because yeah. we couldn't identify the guys. Yeah. They were, you know. Where do those documentaries live now? Are they on YouTube? On or? YouTube, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's a beautiful book. So, so this particular picture is, um, 
a woman that we met. Actually, the story began where the day before we met her, there was this commotion on the piers, and I live right directly across from the piers, excuse me for seeing everybody out. And uh, there was a bunch of people on the piers, and there was this fire engines and, and ambulances, and then we saw a boat, we saw scuba divers. It was just like this chaos going on. And I got close, I started to edge my way over, and they were pulling a body out. And I was like, wow, that's, that's so awful. And I went home, and you know, that was the end of the, that day. That just spoiled my shoe. And the next day, uh, I went out and went back to the piers, just kind of like seeing what was going on. And I met Mahela. And very soft-spoken, just sitting, sun's going down, and I photographed her. And then a year later, the New Yorker decided to, to excerpt the book. And they needed to get, they needed to fact check and they needed to get quotes from all our subjects. So I had to find her because we didn't have the yeah. right address. It was very difficult for some of the people that we met. We find her and she comes to the studio and she sees that picture and she goes, wow, I was, I was just, that's such a melancholy moment. I was so sad. And I went, why? And she goes, well, my boyfriend had killed himself the day before. And that was, that was a, you know, that was a really heartfelt wow point for me. Anyway. That's heavy. Um, We're going to take uh, questions. Yeah, questions. Now. Questions from All right, you. it's uh, time for questions from the audience. Just a quick reminder, around here, questions generally start with a W or an H, sometimes a D. They are short. We do not believe in two-part questions, and only Judd Apatow gets to ask follow-up questions. <laughs> Those would be the rules. Who wants to go first? Thank you. Uh, so I just wanted to say thank you, Ted, for putting two of my uh, favorites. I'm a fan of both, both these guys. Uh, Judd, I seen you a while ago um, when you were, um, you did a, a, a program uh, with Gary Shandling mm -hmm. and Seth Rogen and some of the guys. That oh, you, at the Paley Festival. Yeah, yeah you, you launched their career, really. So. Well, they, Gary launched my career. Well, okay. that's, yeah, it's good. So a uh, question actually is for Mark. Uh, Sorry, Judd. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody does have a question out there for him later. Right? Cl collaboration is great, though, between you guys. That's, that's awesome. Thank you. Uh, so the, the question is that uh, you do have, as, uh, as Jeff pointed out, uh, the opportunity to, to interact with these uh, celebrities and that. At uh, Who Shot Rock, I've seen you do some um, slides and, and presentations. And you just have a wealth of knowledge. Uh, so uh, are you planning on doing a, a book or something where you take some of those anecdotes or uh, and put them into a book to, to let some of us enjoy as well? Well, I, you know, I've often uh, thought about how you do that, and I, and I feel like if you explain photographs too much, they sort of lose their, I don't know, their impact a little bit. I think the stories are, are important to share, but there's something about an image just kind of, kind of needs to work on its own. It's like when, when I would have to photograph comedians most people, and this, this happened a lot when I was starting out, they go like, okay, here's the, here's the great concept, but I, I'm going to improve it, but we need to put a little blurb. And mm -hmm. you go like, well, it's a photograph. Yeah. You don't do that. So I don't know. Uh, maybe, but I kind of like the idea of pictures sort of tell the story. But I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you both so much. Um, I'm a painter, and in, I'm fascinated in how people find their own outlet of which artistic expression they choose in their lives. So this could be for both of you, which is how did you choose your, these forms of expression for your artistic spirit? Uh, well, I, I just became obsessed with the Marx Brothers when I was a kid. I, I'm not really sure why. I think because they were hostile. You know, they, 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 they were mad at all the rich people and their tuxedos and... and uh, there, I, I must have been mad. I think I was very small as a kid, and and I felt victimized by all the, the you know the the kids who were popular and played sports. And so I liked like someone like Harpo who would just punch somebody in the face, and and, uh, and then that led to an interest in, in stand up comedy. My grandmother was friends with Tony Fields, and so I would go see Tony Fields shows when I was a little kid, mm -hmm. and 
At, at one point, she had her leg amputated because she had diabetes. Mm. And I saw her do a show with one leg, and she just got a standing ovation, and the place went crazy. And on some level, I thought, wow, you could, you could be, you know, uh, different and be loved and entertain and connect with people. And I think as a little kid, that programmed into me, like, oh, that seems like a, a good space to be in. Mm. I never knew that. Um, I actually had a lazy eye when I was a kid, and I had found it very difficult to read when I was supposed to be reading. So I used to look at Life magazine, and I used to look at Look magazine, and I used to look at National wow. Geographic, and I think I just kind of became picture savvy. Yeah. And then uh, when I was 13, my mom was, was so worried what I would do after school that she signed me up at the Jewish Community Center to, into a darkroom class. And I, I, I literally didn't care about taking pictures. I just liked going and making prints. But eventually I had to figure yeah. out what I was going to make a print of. So yeah. I had to go and take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Judd. Um, I've been watching your master class the last couple of days. How is it? I, it's awesome. I recommend it. I, yeah. recommend I haven't talked to many people who've seen my master class. And, and you actually talk about your history and how you got into communet, which I found very fascinating. Uh, my question for Mark, I'm a big fan of your photography, you. is um, how much of the creativity is art director driven versus what you put into it, I mean, versus personal work on your commercial side? Well, you know, a lot of the work that you see that's conceptual, it really starts from just a, a really simple idea, and then... You grow it, and you grow the way you grow it is you grow it with really good support. Like you, you, you find great people that you like to work with in, in set design, or you know, incredible people in wardrobe design. Some of the some of the fashion pictures. The only reason why they look so great is because, you know, a great editor like an Ariane Phillips uh, was there to kind of show me how I could improve what I was working upon because he's the expert, I'm not. And so, I try to. I try to keep my, you know, my hands in the soup as much as I can, but I do have like great teams of people that help me with that. Typically, editorial, I, I drive that train, right? In commercial work, like advertising work or you know entertainment work, as we call it, the work here in Hollywood, is uh, judge the exception to it. But a lot of people rely on these companies that come up with hundreds of concepts and they whittle them down to a dozen and they, you try to squeeze that in in a day. So it's, it's really by committee what's going to sell. It's tested. You know, there's a testing of it. I don't know why yeah. you test a poster. <laughs> so that's, that's that. Thanks so much for doing this. Um, I'm a filmmaker and from each of you, I would love to know what are the most, what are the, oh, most, right. <laughs> what are the most challenging events that you've had to deal with in your career, and how did you handle them? Um, the most challenging events. Uh, well, I got a lot of TV shows canceled. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I think when I was young, you know, I would get notes from executives, and I really didn't know how to uh, be political and how I handled the notes when I disagreed with them. Right. And I was doing a, a sketch show with Ben Stiller, and the, uh, the network said, um, here's all these notes. And there was a lot of notes, and I thought they were terrible. And I said, uh, well, I'm not going to do any of them. What happens now? <laughs> and then we were Good canceled. Point. We were canceled. <laughs> so I had to learn how to you know, have those conversations uh, in, a, in a healthier way. Good note listener. Yes. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> challenges. Um, you know, I would say kind of a world that tends to morph a lot. My world tends to morph a lot, especially with the, you know, the digital world. We, uh, you know, we were in the golden years of magazines, and now it's like the golden years of iPad. Yeah. And it's just a different, the, the, reason why I signed up to be a photographer is I like the, the tactile experience of 
making a print. That's how I started out doing it, and holding a print and putting a print on the wall. And I just can't, can't imagine that going away. So I find that pretty challenging. Up here in the back. Hi, Mark, I wanted to ask you if you'd take a second to talk a little bit more about when you have a subject you're getting ready to shoot and then thinking in terms of opposites. Mm -hmm. uh, you have your subject and an opposite. I, I was intrigued by that. I was wondering if you could just tell us. Well, a like about when we did Seinfeld, we were doing Jerry, and we, it was just like a, just like a white piece of paper in front of you, and one of the ideas was Elvis. Jerry yeah. is Elvis. So we took that. We had a bunch of ideas, but that one sat. And then my friend, Fred Woodward, who was a creative director at Rolling Stone, decided he'd make it like the stamp, like the young and the old Elvis. <laughs> so the young Elvis was like, the 50 million fans can't be wrong. And then the old Elvis was like in the jumpsuit with a huge turkey leg and a big turkey <laughs> wad on the side of his face. And... Those are the two covers. Those are yeah. like, like hotcakes. But anyway, so the idea is I get something sparks when I think about the opposite. And it may not ever go that direction, but you, you can find some interesting veins to go down, some different you know, tentacles to go down when you think about what something is not rather than what something is. And uh, I don't know. It's just always kind of worked for me. And I just make two columns and play with that. Here in the front row. Hi guys. Uh, Mark, question for you. Uh, is there anyone you've always wanted to photograph but have never had an opportunity to? Yeah, Prince. Michael Jackson. Uh, what am I going to do? <laughs> um, and Chumba Wumba. Ronda Rousey? <laughs> Mark, do you have one picture that you consider your big break? The one of Judd. For, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> um, my big break, I would say probably the, the leap forward was the picture of Fleetwood Mac. That was where I kind of became, I learned how to take that, that funny part of me and make it into kind of a crafty, painterly, big idea. Keeping it elevated, keeping it, bringing that gravitas to it. And, and really the thing that, that also was, was very helpful was no one was shooting color. And so I was really elevating that work in color and figuring out how to light it differently and just make it big. We have time for two more questions. Hi, Mark. Uh, what would you say was your tipping point when you went from just a man with a vision to a man who was trusted with that vision? I don't think that's happened yet. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. I, I always feel like I'm going to fuck it up. It's, it's, it's eventually, it's that someone's going to realize I'm just mm -hmm. pulling the wool over their eyes, and I'm going to really just... That's the guess. Yeah. Right? That you're and, a fraud. Yeah, I'm a fraud. But isn't it weird, like, when you look at all the pictures, I wonder how you see it versus how we see it, because I see it, and I cannot believe how awesome all those photographs are. <laughs> and so are you able to uh, own the greatness of, of your work? Well, you know, the thing that I do is, is I'm... And, and I've said this about you, too, is like you are... Oh, I know I'm great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm asking you if you're insecure. I'm no, not insecure. You're, no, but you're a great, you're a great <laughs> editor. Yeah. You, you know how to edit it down to that very reductive place. And I think to answer your question is that uh, I really trust myself. And I've always really trusted myself. Now, that does not mean that you're just going to fall on your nose a bunch of times. But that's kind of the beauty of it. I've never had a problem with, you know, getting banged up a little bit. And not everybody's going to like you. Not all your subjects are going to like you, and not your editors. They're going to, you know, there are people that are like, wow, that was a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and that hurts. But I have learned to trust myself that if 
I'm standing there, and I'm photographing this fog around these piers, and it's like 4.30 on a January day, and there's just like this amazing spiritual moment I'm having with my camera. Somebody's going to like it. Yeah. <laughs> so I trust myself. And our final question for the evening. Oh. My question is about uh, creation and inspiration. When you talked about planning for a photo shoot and what you're going to do, and I was just wondering if you had an instance where you'd done that planning meticulous about what you were going to do, and then you walked in the shoot and it went in a totally different direction. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, secret to, a, to walking away when that happens. The secret is have a great background set up with a light. <laughs> Uh, and the, tr the truth is, you all, you have to have a plan B because yeah. if you're gonna if you're gonna just you know throw a big idea out to somebody and not really tell them sort of where you're going, you got to be prepared that they may not do it. And uh, yeah, I've had many instances where you know I thought I remember uh, I was gonna um, uh, God, what's his name uh, Beck. Back I was going to photograph. I was going to photograph the guy Beck, and I had grown. My friend was this artist <laughs> who knew how to make a grass suit, and he had grown a suit for seven days for me <laughs> in New York, and then he shipped it up here, like just paid for the whole thing because he was just excited to be a part of it. And Beck came in and went like, "Nah, I'm not going to do that." <laughs> and I was and like, it what seems are we so Beck-like? Yeah. To wear, a but grass I did suit. have a great background. Yeah. No, he didn't. He he posed in our field with with uh, our sheep, yeah. but uh, he didn't wear the grass suit. So. And you know, he made a mistake. Yeah. Uh, well, we want to thank everybody for coming. Thank you guys out for today. coming out.